his Excel file. This Excel file has a data. So what we are going to do, we are going to do a data visualization in Power BI. Some of you might ask me, what is BI? It's not Bahasa English, it's business, business intelligence. So as you can see over here, we have football club, revenue items, forecasted revenue, and actual revenue. So just now, I have already extracted the file into the Power BI, right? So of course, this is arranged in alphabetical order. And of course, as you can see over here, this is the report view. In this report is where we are going to build the dashboard and visualization. But I'm also going to show you the data view. Data view means the table format of the data. As you can see, this is the table format whereby we have the football club, revenue items, forecasted revenue, and actual revenue. And then when I click on the model view, the model view will show the diagram. All right. In future, if they say you want to connect more than one table or more than one Excel file, you can actually use this model view. All right. But for today's session, I will just focus on the data view. Because what we're going to do is we want to group the data. Okay, as you can see, these football clubs, we want to group the data. So how we are going to group the data? There are two steps. Step number one is you click on this column. All right. So once you click on this column, you can actually press right click. So when you press right click, can you see new group? My friends, if you can see new group, maybe you can show some emoji. If you can see this line called new group. Okay, so what does it mean? Means we can actually group this, we can actually categorize this. For example, I click this new group. So the moment when I click the new group, you will notice that a big box or a window will appear. So as you can see, this is a football club. What I'm going to do is I want to group this. That means Arsenal, LC, and Tottenham Hospital. I want to group this. So I just press this and control button. I group. So I group this and it will be popping out over here. And I'm going to put this as London, right? Because all these football clubs are located in London. All right. The next step is I want to group Manchester City and Manchester United. So I just click Manchester City, control button, Manchester United, and I group. And then I will name them as Manchester. All right. Okay. The next thing is I'm going to group this and Everton and Liverpool since they are located in the district called Liverpool. All right. So this is the grouping is called list. So it's grouping type by list. So I'm going to group this and I'm going to press OK. So the moment when I press OK, it will load again. And now it shows, now it will show you the grouping. So it will show you that Arsenal, Chelsea falls under London, Liverpool, Everton falls under Liverpool, Manchester United, City, United falls under Manchester. So now you can actually categorize or group this into one particular group. All right. So now you can do this. So again, I repeat, I just press here and I just right click. So when I press right click, I just go to new group. So this is where we can group the data or you can actually go here, right click. And when you go to press right click over here, can you see new group? If you can see new group, maybe can you show some emoji or emotions, right? So this is how you can just click this and then you can categorize your data. Okay, it depends. Mengiko the keperluan anda. So if just say anda nak categorize Kuala Lumpur and Selangor, Kuala Lumpur and Kota Jaya under wilayah, or maybe Ipoh and Taiping under Ipera, it depends on your particular data. Okay, for my data, I have football clubs, which is in from United Kingdom, and I want to uh, categorize this according to the geography locations. All right. So the next thing what I do is, I want to create a dashboard, a visualization. So I go to insert and I create a shape, a rectangular shape. So this is a rectangular shape and I'm just going to put this. Okay, this will be my title. All right, so this is the shape. Can you see this format area over here? My friends, if you can see the format area, maybe you can show some thumbs up or some emoji. Okay, so in this format area, I hope you can see style, all right? So you go to the style, and then once you go to the style, you will notice under the style, there's an item called text. Can you see the text? All right, if you can see the text, maybe you can show some thumbs up, all right? Under shape, under style, there's an icon called text. So you just press on, and then you click here, and then I'm going to put this as financial performance. Right? As you can see, this is financial performance. However, you notice that the rating is too small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it as size 50. So this is a financial performance. I want to bold this. As you can see, it's bold. And I also want to put it as a left align. I click left. So now it is on left align, as you can see over here. All right. So of course, if you're presenting to your manager or to your HODs, you can actually use a title whereby you can actually present your dashboard. All right. Okay, so the next thing is what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can prepare some charts, some fascinating charts. Right, let me show, let me start again, if you can't see. Okay. Okay, so as you can see over here, can you see chart? Okay, of course, there's a lot of visualization. We can actually create bar chart, column chart, but can you see this one, two, three? If you can see this one, two, three or chart, maybe you can show some thumbs up or emoji. All right, so this card shows your symbol. So for example, I click this card and then I'm going to put my forecasted revenue. I'm going to tick this box. So this forecasted revenue will pop up here and now it will show that there is a 1 million forecasted revenue. And of course, I don't want this sum off. So what I'm going to do is I want to remove it. I double click and then I'll just remove this. Okay, so I press enter. So now it has forecasted revenue. And then what I do is I just small, make it smaller as you can see. So 1 million forecasted revenue. And then I just click on this line, this space. And then I click cut again. I click actual revenue. So actual revenue is 2 million. But again, I'm going to change the name. I just double click this 
and I'm going to remove the sum off, and there you go. So now you have 2 million of actual revenue, and I'm going to put this aligned together. You can actually change the color as well. How to change color is you click on this box, as you can see here, you click the box, you go to format your visual. So in your format to visual, you can actually go to general, and then you go to effects, and now you can actually change the color. Maybe you change the color to dark blue. All right, so this is dark blue, and then you go to visual, the color data, maybe you put it as white color. So now it appears white color. And then you just remove this category label, you put white color as well. All right, it depends on you. It depends on your manager's preference as well. All right, some companies they have their own layout, so you can use the layout as well. So I'm going to click this as well. I go to general, I go to effects, I just choose maybe light blue, right? This blue. And then I go to visual, I go to category label, and I choose dark black, right? So you have the black and you have this. So 1 million forecasted revenue and 2 million actual revenue. But also in your visualization, you can actually insert slicer. That means what you do is you just click this um, space and then I want you to see this. Can you see this slicer over here? If you can see this icon slicer, maybe you can just uh, show some thumbs up or emoji. All right, what is slicer? So slicer is basically a selection, a pilihan. So by just choosing the slicer, for example, I just click the slicer. So when I click the slicer and just say I choose football club group, right? So I'm just going to click this and maybe I'll just double click this. I put this as location. There you go. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up. Okay. So you can actually choose this format. You go to this you format, your visual, and then you go to your slicer, slicer settings. You can actually choose vertical list. You can actually choose style as well. So if any appear types, you can be like this format. All right. Let me upkeep this. Okay. Just maybe I'll just put it down and down. All right, there you go. So you can actually put it um, on a tiles format, or you can actually choose a drop down list. As you can see over here, there's a drop down list. So you can actually choose a drop down list, or you can actually choose a vertical list. It's up to you. All right. So for example, if just say I choose a drop down list. Okay, let me adjust this. So if just say I choose Liverpool. So when I click Liverpool, you notice that the performance has changed, whereby the actual revenue is greater than the forecasted revenue. But now if just say I choose Manchester, right? So I click Manchester, and now it shows the performance of Manchester. So if Manchester is greater as well. So what about London? So when I click London, it shows that the forecasted revenue is greater than the actual. All right. So in your slicer as well, when you click the slicer, you go to your format, your visual, and you go to the slicer settings. You can actually make the selection. Either you want show select as well. Okay. So in this case, I just click this and I just select all. So once I select all, it shows everything. All right. So it depends on your creativity. So if you want to do a drop down list, also can. Or if you want to do a tiles, also can. So what about tiles? Let me show you. You go to your format visual, slicer settings, you click here, and you can choose tiles. So now this is how it looks like. So now you can actually choose Liverpool. If you choose Liverpool, that means, okay, Liverpool. So when I choose Liverpool, you can see the performance of Liverpool. So if you just say I click Manchester, you can see the performance of Manchester. And I click London, you can see the performance of London. All right. So this is actually the view of the, of the visualization. All right. But actually, you can also upkeep as well. Okay. Maybe let me upkeep this. I want to create maybe now a column chart. So I create a column chart and then I just put on um, actual revenue, forecasted revenue, and then I have the revenue items. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this. I want to put it over here, make it bigger, something like this. There you go. So now you have these charts as well. And then of course, I want to change the title. So maybe I just click this. I'll remove the sum off and I double click this. I remove the sum off as well. So now you have the actual revenue, forecasted revenue. But I also want to change the title as well. So what I do is I go to this format your visual, and then I go to the data labels. I just add the data labels as well. So you have the data labels, and then I go to general, I click on title, and I change the revenue. So I put forecasted revenue versus actual revenue. All right. So now I just want to change this to maybe center. So now it's center. So now this is how you can show your dashboard visualization. So if you just say I click Manchester, it shows the reading of Manchester. So if I click Liverpool, it shows the reading of Liverpool. All right. But now I want, I can see the performance of forecast and also actual. But what I want to see the proportion of it. That means I can actually create a, a pie chart. So I create this pie chart and I select actual revenue. I select revenue items. And what I do is I make it bigger over here. All right. So this is how it looks like. Again, I'll just change the name. So maybe to actual revenue. So now you have the actual revenue by the revenue items. And it is noted that the ticket sales is greater. All right. So basically, this is a very simple data visualization. As you can see, you have the title, you have the slicer. If you pick London, it shows London. 
If you pick Manchester, it shows Manchester. And if you pick select all, it selects everything. All right. So this is a very simple data visualization. All right. So some of you might ask me how you can actually download this. You go to your Windows button. You can just type Microsoft Store. You go to your Microsoft Store. Basically, Microsoft Store is like oh, Apple Store, iOS Store, and your Google app. All right. You have your Android Google app, App Store, and also iOS Store. So you go to this store, and then you can actually go to Power BI Desktop. It's actually free, and you can actually download this. But some of you, if just say you want to go to the website, you can go to this website and you go to the Power BI. Later, I'll share the link, and you can actually download this for free. All right. So this is how you can download this data. And now what you can do is you can actually export this into a PDF format. All right. So how to export this into a PDF format? All right. Just by using Control P. With the keyboard shortcut of Control P, you can actually export this to a PDF format. That means when I press this Control P, the moment I press Control P, of course it will not work in the PDF format. This is how it works. Okay. Of course you can't click this. It won't work in PDF format because PDF format is either readable only. But this is how you can actually export your data. All right. You can't actually amend your slicer over here. All right. Did you learn something new? If you have learned something new, maybe you can show some thumbs up, my friends. Okay, so basically this is actually Power BI. Of course, some of you might tell, some of it depends on your creativity. It depends on how you can modify your sheet and your visualization. But the number one priority is your numbers must be accurate. In today's session, I taught you based on a fictional data, based on a dummy data. But when you start working, when you work, when you have your managers, your bosses, your project, make sure all these numbers are accurate. If the numbers are wrong, you will jeopardize your career and also your work. So make sure the numbers are correct and more important, the coloring. So sometimes coloring, it must be code or follow your manager's preference or follow your company's um, logo and vision. All right. Okay. So this is the first exercise where I showed on the financial performance of a football club. All right. 